the fifth Sunday of ordinary time and the first Sunday of February. I want to share with you the first reading of today's liturgy, just parts of it. And I would like you to listen to it and maybe pray over it in terms of your politics. What would your politics say about this first reading? And how easy it is to make religion political and political kind of our religion. How does this fit in your religion? How does it fit in your politics? The Lord says in Isaiah, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. Hard words. If you bestow your bread, continues, on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the dark, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. So that's the opening context of Jesus continuing the Sermon on the Mount. So last week we had Jesus sitting up there as the new Moses, and he says, uh, you will be happy if you can live with your humanity, if you have a poverty of spirit that allows you to be who you are. You will be meek and gentle, peacemaker. If you know you who you are, then that first reading from Isaiah takes some power in your life. But today's gospel is rather short, but devastating. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. How did the disciples hear that? And he says, salt, you know, salt by itself is just salt. Salt doesn't taste itself. Salt needs something to season, to bring forth flavor. And light, light needs darkness to be light. And you, you see the light and you see other things because of the light. And Jesus says, you are that light. You are the light of the world. And you don't hide yourself. And, and he says an amazing thing. He says, let your light be seen in the good deeds you do and people will not say, what a good person but how good God is that God gave that person that light, that education, that generosity, that care for the oppressed and the hungry and the naked. How good God is that God has shared with us not to be hidden. So what is the gospel for the disciples? Don't be hidden. Let it out. Let what is in you, because it's in you because God put it there, let it out so that the giver will be seen. There is the human attractiveness to be noted ourselves. There's interesting discernment here. I say Mass every Sunday at a parish, diocesan parish in Omaha, and every Sunday 
I have a temptation. I am a good homilist. I know that. God gave me that. And God says, don't keep it to yourself. That's like salt sitting on the shelf. The shelf, you just stay there. You'd be a good salt. Salt is only good when it flavors something else. A light is really only good when it illumines the goodness around it. The light is not the light so that you see the light. But every Sunday, I get tempted that the reason I'm going out to that parish is to get celebrated as a good homilist. And the evil spirit says, no, you should stay home and be humble. Don't let that light out because it's all about you, isn't it? And that's the nice temptation. And the evil spirit loves to tempt me and loves to keep me at home, loves to keep me on the shelf, loves to keep my light darkened so that I will feel good about myself, that I'm nice and humble. Evil spirit tempts us to keep ourselves to ourselves. But the, re the really power that Jesus is offering to the disciples and the church offers to us is we are to season other people. We are to let the light shine on their goodness and God's goodness to them. So your light illumines the goodness in others, not yourself. But the evil spirit can tempt you to say, it's all about you, isn't it? Aren't you the good little preacher? Aren't you the good little servant? Aren't you the good little person in the church? Don't listen to that evil spirit that keeps you to yourself. Jesus is saying, don't keep as salt, don't keep the salt on the shelf. Sprinkle it around to bring out the flavor in others so that the, as light, bring out what's in, what did God give to other people? The encouragement that, that the disciples and the apostles and we, the encouragement that we give to other people to accept the gifts that they are, to tell them about the gifts that they have. And encourage them to let it out. Let the salt flavor life. Let the light of God shine so that God will receive the honor. People say nice things about homilies and these videos I give. People, people say, I, I like to hear that. I like to be liked. But I don't, I, I don't want to do them. What the evil spirit is saying I'm doing it for is for my glory. No, our light is to shine so that other people's darkness about who they are will be diminished and enlightened. And then we are the light of Christ. We are the light that he is to the world saying the goodness of God, the creating love of God is still creating. And I am helping you by encouraging you, by telling you what's good about you. I am telling you that God has been good to you. The creating loving God is still creating and loving. And once you accept what I say about you, there's a hook that you can't hide it under a bushel either. And it takes encouragement and encourage, heart, so that the goodness of God may still be seen in how you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit the sick. All that he says in Matthew 25, he's saying early in Matthew 5, that the goodness in me is meant to be shared with the goodness of you, that you see the goodness of you, and that we both give praise and thanksgiving to the God, the giver, the creator. So the, the first reading, you might argue with it. Well, argue with Jesus about yourself, about his call to you, to us. It's quite a political, prophecy. We are asked to pray with it these days and to pray with how free we are to be as salt and light to others, that the glory of God might be revealed through me and through you. Don't hide yourself.
because you're hiding him.